This is the most well taped up four drill box I've ever seen. Oh, it's so close. That's exquisite. That's super cool. Strap yourself in. Mini Wargaming are the OG content creators for our hobby. They've amassed an enormous following and despite being Hollywood A-list celebrities, they've maintained a desire to support the rest of the community. In this video, I'm taking you on a journey as Flashing Badger Painting, that's me, reaches out to Mini Wargaming and then this snowballs into me painting an absolute beast of a model for Mini Wargaming Josh. I've even grown my beard as a homage to the great man. This will test my skills because this is an intimidating model to paint, but I'm going to show you my building and my painting steps along the way whilst trying to entertain you. But how does it all turn out? Will the model survive the journey and feature online? You're going to have to sit back and enjoy the ride. All right, back it up. I obviously skipped over some parts there in my excitement. One of my dorky bucket list items is to one day head over and roll some dice with the guys. But Google tells me that it's a bit of a prolonged drive to Canada. So I'll put that out of mind for now. When I started this side project, I was looking for opportunities to be noticed and to help grow the channel. I figured it was going to be a good idea to reach out to some already established YouTube content creators. But every time I went to send an email, I talked myself out of it. My mates encouraged me. Likely though, they just thirsted for another story of me embarrassing myself. But one night, after a few too many mojitos, I reflected on the words of the famous Wayne Jetski, that you miss 100% of the shots you don't formally record in email format. I sent Mini Wargaming an email, told them I was a YouTube pleb, and that I wanted to paint them a model. Then guess what happened? Absolutely nothing. Weeks passed and I completely forgot about it. Then BAM! A reply from Josh. The man, the myth, the beard. Josh must have had a look at the channel and then he reached out. He could have asked me to paint him an entire army and I reckon I would have done it. But to his credit, he picked out a single model and that was my task. Josh plays a bunch of armies for mini wargaming, including Admech, Astra Militarum, Imperial Guard, Imperial Knights, Night Lords, Custodies, and a whole bunch more. I've never been commissioned before because why would anyone pay for this service? But I am half a chance to fake it and scrape by, provided Josh doesn't pick something too complex, or heaven forbid, something Forge World. Ah! Forge World. Fragile, sometimes warped, really vague instructions, but on the plus side, they're really expensive. If you're going to this kind of length for a model, then you want to make sure that you get the most out of it. The base of the model is a cool design where the smaller regular base can be added to the larger base to make a dominant display. Josh has requested that I put the model together so that he can use it on the smaller base, but also return it to the larger one as an alternative. Makes sense. The second request is to magnetize Baldor's head and paint up a helmet variant for some added variety. Something like this is barely any extra work for you, and it's a great way to get something extra out of your favourite character models. Magnets! How do they work? The same hand drill that you use for the gun barrels is what you can use for your magnets. I have a motorised one called a WOW stick, which is the type of hobby item that you'll buy yourself when money's burning a hole in your pocket. I'm looking at you, tiny Vortex paint mixer. I couldn't find a way to avoid having to magnetise the base because parts of the scenery overlap Baldor's smaller base, locking it in. I lined up where the holes need to be by putting a tiny drop of paint on one part of the smaller base and then dry fitting it into the larger base. When I remove it, there was a black spot on both parts. I don't know if that's the smartest way to do it, but it turned out pretty accurate here. So with the magnets in, here's how the base turned out. Normally my process is to lay down all of the base colours first and then come back through and do my recess shadows, my layers and my highlighting. But it means for about 80% of my painting process, the model looks really ugly. I've identified that I'm really nervous about painting this one and I want some little wins along the way as encouragement. So instead this time around, I'm going to paint section by section. There are sections of the model's robes which are tucked away underneath. 
These won't really be visible unless you really go searching for them. Rather than leaving them unpainted, I'm getting to these areas now with a mix of black and corn red to act as a heavy shadow to how the rest of the cape will look later on. I know my limitations and I don't have the talent and the patience to paint the entire model in non-metallic metal. And I've also convinced myself that it wouldn't match the rest of Josh's army. Therefore, I'll be painting in metallics, but trying to make the armor a little more exciting than normal. Retributor Gold is the base color, and there's a couple of reasons why I'm starting off with the model by painting the armor. And that's because there's a lot of it, and I don't have to be very neat with the base coat. Anytime I bump the wrong area, there's no worry because I'll be coming back and painting over the top with other colors later. Also, the armor is the lowest point on this model, and I don't want to be trying to reach into tricky places later on. Rather than a standard wash, I'm using Contrast Paint Fire Slayer, and I'm toning down the intensity by creating a one-to-one -one ratio with Contrast Medium. The red tone in the brown wash gives the armor some living warmth rather than just a dirty brown feel. For the deepest recesses, I want these darker to create more depth to the armor. To achieve this, I'm using Agrax Earthshade and targeting these areas. Then for some nice sharp contrast, I'm mixing black with Rhinox Hide Brown and painting a thin line in some of the panel recesses. Mixing our base colour Retributor Gold with Stormhost Silver, I'm creating a highlight layer which I'm thinning down a little and painting around the edges and also the raised areas of the larger panels. The final step for the gold armor is an edge highlight with Stormhose Silver on the prominent raised edges where I think the light would strike. Normally when I paint robes, I have very defined transitions from color to color that ends up with quite a cartoony looking feel to it. This time around, I wanna try something different and achieve a smoother, more realistic look to the robes. I've selected red for the color of the robe so that it matches the rest of Josh's army and I think it will pair well with the color that I've got planned for the weapon. More on that later though, so stay with me. A 50-50 mix of corn red and black is my base color for the robe. This takes a couple of thin coats to get a nice layer down. I start with the darker areas in the shadows and I'll end up working my way brighter. The paints I use during this process are black, Corn Red, Mephiston Red, Wild Rider Red, and Avalon Sunset. You don't need these specific colors. Use what you have in front of you and you'll be able to achieve the same look. To achieve the smoother blend, I'm thinning down the paints more than usual to create glazes. It takes a little longer as it needs multiple coats and I have to wait for it to dry. So I wouldn't perform this army wide, but for a character like this, sure thing. I mentioned that not only a smooth transition was my plan, but also some more realism. I'll create some texture to the robe by painting in a hash pattern along these areas. Again, I'm thinning down the paint so that the effect isn't too bold. Normally I would dirty the bottom of a robe or a cloak because again, this helps to inform the viewer that it's a fabric that's been collecting dirt. However, instead I want this one to be clean, but just slightly worn around the edges. I figured that Mr. Veldo would be afforded a laundry allowance. In the grim darkness of the far future, mankind has an ongoing quest to pursue the light of the God Emperor. This requires a great deal of laundry. Hmm. Thank you, Gordon. On the back of the robe is a large symbol. There's already so much going on with the gold armor and the robe that I want to keep this area pretty simple. I'm painting with browns and simply layering a couple of colors from a dark to medium that are fairly dull and non-offensive. Pro tip number 46, this is scrofulous brown and you should aim to use it on every single miniature that you paint. The color, the colors are relevant. The point is the name scrofulous brown and the joy it will bring to you every time you say it. It feeds the soul. These signature tips one day will be hidden behind an obscene paywall. You're welcome. Time for another exciting part to get the creativity flowing. 
I want the blade to be a focal point of this miniature because it's been lifted up and away from Constantine and the eye is going to be naturally drawn to it. Also, there's an expectation that Constantine wouldn't be wielding some stock standard Apollonian spear that you could pick up at your local Kmart. I start with a very light blue, which is a mix of off-white and Fenrisian grey. This took several thin coats until I had coverage over the black prime. As I said, it's a busy model and the armour is just bright gold with little wiggle room. The robe looks good, but it's out of view until you rotate the model, so the blade is a good opportunity for some colour and flair. In my research, I see most Custodes blades painted with the lightning effect, which looks cool, but I want something different. Scrolling through other armies and models, I really like the crystal blade look where there's a great contrast from light to dark. Next I'm using a thinned down Sotek green and glazing this across the blade. Areas around the hilt are getting more coats. When I'm glazing, the direction I drag the brush is important. I bring the brush in the direction from the area I want to be lighter, ending with the area that I want to be darker. As I lift the brush, this will leave additional paint in that area. The blade face is split into half and then the colours are inverted. Bright at the top on one side, then dark on the other. Hang around to the end and I'll show you this effect on a symmetrical blade which will make it look even clearer. I continue this process as I work my way darker and darker. Each time I change colour, I create a transition by blending it with the previous colour on my wet palette. The colours used, again, a Caliban green and then eventually a black. Now the fun parts. Here we create the other extreme of the contrast by using bright highlights. The first is our starting base mix again of off-white and Fenrisian grey. I'm painting the edges of the blade with a focus on the light catching sharp areas. Then a pure white edge highlight. I'm using Arctic White from Vallejo and I'm painting less of the edge so that I'm not covering up all of the previous layer. With the same white, I'm picking out some points on the blade and creating a thin sharp line to help sell the crystal look. I think it's worked, but you can be the judge of that. I had read somewhere that mankind's greatest protectors were adorned with fierce animal trophies. Because he wasn't already carrying enough weight, they've also draped some huge beast carcass over his left shoulder. Maybe if he wasn't lugging around too much junk, he could have been a little bit lighter on his feet and actually protected the emperor. Too soon? I don't want to steal attention away from the armour or the blade. Remember that if everything stands out, then nothing stands out. It's okay to deliberately make some areas bland. I'm choosing quite dull colours and sticking to a simple painting method of base, wash and layer. My tip for the horns is to glaze the colour transition and work in reverse of what you would instinctively do. Paint light at the bottom and work towards dark browns at the tip. For those wings on his right shoulder, simple and boring blacks and greys. The purity seals are bone colours with the handwriting in a mix of black and rhinox brown, then with a sepia shade over the lot. And I'm very carefully transcribing the entire Adeptus Custodes Codex onto that small parchment for Josh to use as a mid-game reference. I've been putting this off. Surely no one likes painting bare heads. If a model comes with an option for a bare head or a helmet, you best believe I'm choosing safety and that model's getting a stack hat every day. Josh wants him to look more rugged, as though he's been fighting in a campaign and not as though he's stepped straight off a catwalk. I'm using regular skin tones, starting with Cadian flesh tone mixed with some wraith bone. 
Then I'm adding a little bugmans for the recess areas like the ears, nose, eyes, wrinkles and the side of the head that is more in the shadow. Again, I'm thinning the paints down to try and make the skin colour transitions look smoother. This is so tiny though, it's madness that we even try and put so much detail on a 28mm scale head. Oh, I've just realised that Josh has probably requested the magnetised head swap in case the bare head that I paint looks like rubbish, then he doesn't have to use it without hurting my feelings. Makes sense. Those eyes. Oh my god, look at that expression. This guy looks like he's seen some stuff in his time. I'm not even going to change it. The base is large, and if I use any bright eye-catching colours, then people will stop looking at Veldor. My goal is to have the background look good, but not be the centre of attention. I want Veldor to be the centre of attention. A guy stomping around in gold armour doesn't want to share the spotlight. I want to use similar colours to Josh's current army bases, so that there's a noticeable tie-in with what he already uses. I split the base into coloured sections such as grey steps and brown dirt rubble, but I will overbrush some colours into the opposite areas to link them more naturally. I'm painting all of the base colours first and I don't have to wait for the colours to dry. If they clash and they wet blend a little then this will just give a natural transition. The whole base is getting the same wash colour, which is Agrax Earthshade. I figure that if rubble has been falling into the dirt and soldiers have been stomping around, then it makes sense to have some colours being shared. Dry brushing is a speedy way to achieve a great look on bases with this much rough texture. I mix a couple of lighter greys and then a couple of lighter browns and work my way around the model dry brushing them on. If you're giving me a puzzled look about what dry brushing is, one of my last videos is all about dry brushing Cthulhu models, so treat yourself to that. On the base are a couple of pieces of armour from a soldier that was foolish enough to get up in Valdor's grill about topics such as politics, religion or Superman collecting custodies. There are some Thousand Suns looking iconography on the rubble, but I want a colour that complements the rest of the model and fits the lore. So Sons of Horus it is. A couple of grass tufts here and there for added character, and this base is looking similar to the Temple Battle Ready base range from Gamers Grass that Josh currently uses. Okay, let's have a look at how Constantine Valdor turned out. Also though, stick around because I have another model afterwards that I want to show you. Oh no, I can see that there is potentially a little bit of breakage, but nothing that won't be able to be fixed. When I was looking for a head swap, demand was obviously really high because I couldn't find any on any of the bit sites or even any of the local marketplaces. I'm not sure, because I think he said that there was something else somewhere in here. I'm just not sure where it was. Ah, there we go. So there's an extra. Yeah, come check this out. So that is a very exquisitely done blade champion. This is the little extra surprise I didn't know that I'd have in here. That's super cool. So I decided to go hard and purchased an additional Custodes model just to get a helmet for the magnet head swap variant. 
in a rare moment of maturity, I decided that I should paint and magnetize this blade champion as well, rather than throw the rest of the sprues in my drawer never to see daylight again. Painting a second model alongside in the same color scheme can be done with little added effort and can be a handy way to tick along with your painting backlog, or like in this case, just to add a little surprise. Reflection time. What does all of this mean for me in the channel? Well, I don't know yet, but for me, it was a fun project to work on. Yeah, it's dorky, I get that, but it's good to have a healthy, nerdy hobby in your life that is different to the rest of your world. But what about for the channel? Obviously, I hope that it draws in some interest for flashing badger painting, but if nothing else, oh my God, we have a model in mini wargaming battle reports. Will I do any more commission work? I don't know. I'm so slow of a painter that there's probably no financial gain there for me. But I love the idea of painting for another content creator, or even better yet, I reckon painting for charity would be pretty cool. Thank you so much for watching. If you're keen to keep the love going, then please consider liking, subscribing, and you can even leave me a comment. Like maybe let me know what you thought of my bold strategy to reach out to the big kahunas at Mini Wargaming. I've got more videos in the works, so I look forward to seeing you on the next one.